This is Jared from Commit to Quality. In this video, we're going to go over Postman's Collection Runner tool. It's basically a way of how we can run a collection and verify the results. So if you've been following along with me, you've probably already got these. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate this board API collection. And I'm just going to rename it to Tests to Run. It doesn't really matter what you name this. I'm just saying Test to Run so I can see the difference between everything. Inside here, we've got two GET requests. Tell you what I'll do, we'll, we'll keep them both. So we've got this one that goes to board API forward slash activity. Let's just hit send. And you can see that we've got 200 status and it's given us an activity back. And we've got this other one, which is to get a specific type. In this case, we've said recreational and it must have only plus participants of one. Both of them pass. So what I want to do, so I just want to add some tests into both of these calls to make sure we're happy that it returns a 200 status. And I'm not, I'm not going to write that myself. I'm going to go over to the snippets part. So if you don't see it, click the arrow here to pop it out. I'm just going to search for uh, status code successful. Uh, there we are, is 200 a successful response. i copy that. Let's just hit send. There we are. We've got one test passing because the status code is 200 and I want to put the exact same into this one. So we'll get rid of that and we'll say send and we can see test result for this 200. So let's just save both of these. Now what you've just seen me do is if I have a collection of requests that I want the test, at the moment everything we've gone through we've had to go to the request, hit send and then obviously you can see the test result, you can see the body and everything else. However, what if I want to automate this part where I want to run everything in this collection or specific things within this collection and verify that the tests are passing and I don't have to go into it manually each time? Well, that's what Postman is offering us with the collection runner. It's going to automate making these requests. So how do we do this then? To click to do this, we can click on the collection and you should see run collection here. Let's click into this. And immediately we're greeted with the collection runner tab. Now inside here, you can see you've got the run order of things. You can select which ones you want to run as part of this. It's defaulted to always on on these. You can deselect them all, reset, select all. You can play around with this to see what you want to do. On the right then, we can see we can select different iterations. So if we wanted to run requests multiple times, we can do that. We can even set a delay between each request and you can also pass through a data file if I go into the advanced settings, we have these four options as well, which is to save responses, keep values of variables, run collection without using any stored cookies, and save cookies after collection run. I'm not going to do anything with these. I'm just going to keep it set to the default values. And we missed this part at the top, but you can choose how you run your collection. So I'm going to say run manually, but you can also schedule them for when you want them to run in the Postman cloud. And you can also configure CLI to run your build pipeline, which we'll talk about in future videos. So when you're happy with everything you have, you can just click run tests. And you see here immediately they've run through. So we've had one iteration because I didn't change it. We didn't set a delay. It's given us our average response time for things. It's given us all the tests is run. You can see this one passed with status code 200 and so did this. Uh, in past, you can see them. If we had any failed or any skipped, you'd see them in here as well. So we've got the view summary part as well. So we can toggle between these so we can see the different results. We can also export the results as well. So if you click this, you can save it locally onto your desktop. You can add that then as an attachment to anywhere. We can rerun the tests and we can go back to the first page. So I could say run again and it's going to run them all again. Or I can say new run, which takes us back here. And I could set maybe iterations to two run the tests and now you see that we've had two iterations there so there's a bunch of different things you can do with this like i say you could just toggle one of them put the iteration back to one hit run tests and there we are it's only run this one because that's the only one we said to actually execute now then let's have a look what happens when a test fails so let's go into this one and we'll say status code should be 201 so if i just send on this you can see it's failing. So in the Postman collection, let's say new run. We'll have them both selected and we're going to run the tests. Here, immediately you see they've executed, but this one has failed because our test assertion has failed because, of course, we expected a status of 201, but the actual was a status of 200. 
you can see you can toggle them now to passed and failed so you can see the difference it tells you what the error was as well and why it failed if i click on view summary now what you can see is both of them here but you can see ones with the green mark here and here we've got the red x to show exactly where things have gone wrong you also have the ability to view historic runs as well so when i click view runs you can see all the different stuff we've done today let's go back into here then and the next thing i want to show you is the run order so what if we had a bunch of tests where they rely in on things so we might have a post that needs to be done before we call on a get well we can change the run order inside the postman collection runner if we just go back to new run we can simply drag things around in here in the run order so if i wanted this one to be underneath i can drag it here and you can see now get specific type is at the top and the url quest that didn't have a very clean name is down the bottom and once again you can move them around do whatever you want with these so that's one way of you can do it doing it and tell you what we'll do we'll actually duplicate this request as well because it's easier to see if we have more than two copies so let's just put this to example doesn't matter what we name it but back in the runner We can see the three and we can start dragging them around and putting them wherever we want them to go if i was to move this above get specific request and just close this down what you'll actually see example will be second as well so we can order it directly from the collection itself as well or you can do it inside here so let's close that down i'll put example up the top and what we should see is example is at the top here you can move them around if i close it down and then reopen it what you see is whatever the run order we've set it to here has defaulted back to wherever the collection is. So that's one good thing to remember. Now, like I said, this isn't the only way of doing it. There's also another way of doing this via the scripts. And inside the original post calls or inside the original API calls, we can set what we want the next execution, the next call to be executed. And this is nice and easy to do as well. So let's close this down and let's work through these. So example will be the first thing we want to execute. It's top of the list, so all is good. But what we can actually say inside the test is we can go postman dot set next request. And then we can pass what we want the next request to, to be executed. So in this case, I'm going to say I want get specific type to be the next one executed. And then what I'll do is I'll copy this and inside get specific, so well, let's now actually rename this to um, last call. Let's copy that, hit enter, and inside get specific type, I'll say, I want last call to be the next request executed. So now we change in the run order based on what we've put in the tests. Now what's interesting to know about this, if I execute this manually, nothing will happen. Of course, that's failure. I was wondering whether that was failing, but that's failing because we set it to a failure. So if I send this, nothing happens. It doesn't execute the next one. This is only happening in this Postman collection runner. So let's see the structure we have. We example, which is the top one. We then say, after this is executed, we want the next call, the next API call to be get specific type. And then we want it to go to the last call. So let's go into run collection. You can see the order here is exactly the same, but what, watch when I run the tests. You can see example was run and then get specific type and then last call. And that's because we've set inside the test which one we want to execute after the original call. Now you do need to be very careful when using this because we can see last call is the last one we want to make. But what happens if I just copy this and put this into last call? Well, you might have guessed we're going to be stuck in an infinite loop because what we're saying is example to run and then call get specific type. Get specific type will run and then call last call, which is what we've named this. And then we said after last call, 
x who get specific types it's going to go here and it's going to constantly be stuck in between these two calls and this is very very important to know because you could start adding more api requests to your collection and then you could get stuck in this kind of nasty loop so let's let's check what i've said is true let's go to run collection and just hit run tests here you can see the counter iterating is going to keep going over these because it's all just going back and forth. You can see it's only happened once, for example, because after we've moved from this call to these two, it's these two that are again stuck in that infinite loop. So I'm just going to stop the run so it doesn't keep going there. Now to avoid this, because it can be really messy, you can just set in the last call, if we know this is going to be the last thing that we always want to execute, we can actually say, postman set next request and we can just say this should be null so we always set this to be the last one so let's go back as an example say run collection hit run tests and now we know it has executed after it has finished the execution after last call and i would suggest doing this if you're using this approach just because you always know then this is the last thing that should be executed let's see if i was to put it into null what do you think is going to happen Let's have a look. Let's just close these. Let's open up run collection and hit run. And look, interestingly, get specific type has finished, but last call hasn't been executed, even though it was in the run order. Let's just go back. Even though it's in the run order here, it's selected. Because we have said in get specific type that next request should be null, it's terminated the execution which is another thing to be aware of if last call was of course can be our last one to run in the collection this is fine but if you then add another api that relies on this you need to make sure that you're not having this line of code in there because this will terminate the execution now i spent a lot of time explaining that to you but personally I stick to ordering things via the drag and move approach in here. So I like it down here because typically they don't need to change after they set. But I do see there are many cases when using set next request will make sense. As always, a like and subscribe is appreciated. Thank you for watching and have a good day.